I'll tell you what to do with the JJ. Hey, hey, what do I do with the... By the way, which list is the data in? If I put this in my calculator, which list is the data that I'm curious about for part A? Which list is it in? What do I want to make a confidence interval for for part A? True mean weight. So if I put these two in the list, which list is the data in that I'm curious about for part A? List two, that's right. I know what you mean. You guys all with me? So let's do this. Because I think last time we did this problem together, right? In class? Some of you guys stayed, some of you guys didn't. Uh, we didn't look at this problem. So let's, let's do this problem. This is the other more recent stuff. So everybody, please, if you need a calculator, come get one. Come get one now. While supplies last. Yeah, actually, I don't know if the batteries are, are good. We'll find out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure the batteries are good. Cool. 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 Look at that. What do I have? Mario. I've got all kinds of stuff. I don't know what that is. Okay. Okay, so everybody's got a calculator that wants to play along. So let's all do some fun stuff. Let's all put data in, data entry. The best thing we ever created. Nut. Okay. So anybody ever had pizza from Bronx Pizza? Down in Hillcrest? No? Okay. I used to live, well this, this used to be me. The second to the last was me. And that's what I blamed my weight gain on was being so close to Bronx Pizza. It was way too good. All right. So everybody got that in there. And again, just to remind you guys, if you're in the middle of the test and you go into your list and you're like, list two is gone, just come up and see me. You actually just hit stat, setup editor, or something weird is happening with your lists, right? Okay, so I'm going to do part A. So we're not doing the linear correlation yet. I'm just doing part A. How do I find what I need? And look at me being so nice. I'm not going to say this italicized stuff. I'm not going to say that in the final. Are you kidding me? But... What do I do to get what I need? You can't always get what you want. But what do I do to get what I need? Yes? Do the uh, list and then go over to WinRag. Nope, no, nope. Not yet. Nope. I'm doing part A. Part A, confidence interval. All right, so let's start here. What formula am I going to use? to construct the confidence interval, making it for a mean. What standard deviation are we going to know eventually? You guys, all right. Did I tell you the population standard deviation? What's the only thing we know that I'm giving you? It's the only thing we know. This sample. So what kind of standard deviation are we going to get? Sample standard deviation. Uh, is it normal? Is this distribution normal? Not because it's big enough, but because I say it is. Nah, nah. Right? Okay. So, which formula are we going to use? Going to use Z or T? T. It's normal, but I don't know sigma, so I've got to use T score. So, what formula are we going to use? Nope. It's not a hypothesis test. I'm trying to make a confidence interval. So guys, we're at the stage now where you have suffered through Jeff deriving every damn thing in the universe. When I say <coughs> construct a confidence interval, I want a formula that's got a plus or minus in it. That's how I make an interval, right? I go down and I go up. Are you guys with me? So let's try this again. Which formula do I want to use? 
Yes. There it is. Okay. We did it. All right. T score I'm going to get from the T score chart. That's crazy. And we know. We know how many data points I got. How do I get X bar and S? Because they didn't tell those to you. Yeah, one of our stats. Stat, calc, one of our stats. What am I going to tell the calculator? I've got to be careful. Where's my data that I'm curious about for part A? List two. Shit. I've got to make that list two. Right? We're the humans. we got to tell the calculator where to look. It's dumb. Then no shit. Okay. You guys sort of with me? You're like, we're in the same room, John. Okay. So now I can put in there. Now I know my X bar. I know my S. I just don't know what T is yet. I don't know why I'm shoving it all right here, but oh, well, too bad. N is 9. That's crazy. Sauce. How do I figure out what the T score is going to be? Somebody help me out. Look that sucker up. Do I even have a T chart? I think I do. Do I even have a T chart? Maybe not, Jeff. Man. No teacher for Jeff. All right, too bad. Oh, maybe, yes. What's the degrees of freedom? What's the degrees of freedom? Eight. And I want a 99% confidence interval, so which column am I going to look at? Yeah, so which column is it? Because I see 2.01s. Confidence interval always makes two tails. So the first column, and I'm going to stop at 8. Okay, so I went a little further than your question, Jane. But, um, I'll put the 3.355, whatever it was. Is that what it was about? And then I just throw it on the count. So you know I'm going to give you a problem where I give you a list of data. You have to calculate your own mean and standard deviation, but I'm not making you do it like we did in Chapter 2. You can just do it with one of our stats, right? Because you got more shit to worry about than just calculating standard deviation using the table by itself, right? Okay, maybe. Okay. Okay, so let's actually do the rest of it, the more recent stuff here. I've got my data in here already. Where do I go to get part B answered? Yeah, stat, calc, linreg. I use number four. You can use eight if you want to. It'd be all weird about it. But. By the way, real quick, I don't know if you guys understand. Four and eight are the same stupid thing. Right? If 4 gives me A is 2 and B is 3, 8 is going to give me A is 3 and B is 2. It's just dumb. Okay, so just always use 4. Just make it simple. Is this currently set up correctly? Nope. I want my X's to be L1. I want my Y's to be L2. How's that look, Jeff? Yeah, sweet. I got all the answers. Okay. Is everybody with me? So that was the, so the most recent stuff, of course, was the core, the, the chi-square stuff. But right before that was linear correlation. Oh, yeah, everybody got their quiz. Oh, who just came in? Yeah, let me get caught up real quick. Um, anybody else just now come in? I want to make sure you guys all get your quiz back. So in the stack of stuff I gave you, up upgraded grade sheet summary. Um, 
your quiz and homework. If the homework didn't have anything written on it, it's assumed good. Oh, Louis. Um, So if I ask you to interpret R, yeah, the correlation a possible R. answer for interpret R is strong positive, weak negative, strong negative, decently strong positive, whatever, right? So I asked two questions on the problem though. I said interpret R, and I said what does it mean for the line of best fit for this data, right? Some of you guys answered the question by defining what R is. I never want that shit. I never want a straight up definition. I want you to tell me what the R in this situation means, right? Okay. Um, so on that quiz, if you lost seven points, it's because you only have, you only answered half the question. So I want to, interpretation of R, is it positive or negative? Is it weak or strong, right? And then what does it mean for the line of best fit? Well, if R is strong, or then that means the points are going to be really... Really close to the line. Just gonna see how long I could do that. Just the rest of the whole class is just me going. All right. <coughs> you guys, you guys kind of, or you can say that you're gonna trust the line of best fit to make predictions, right? Isn't that say again. By what? So you could. I need to make sure you know what it means. Does that make sense? So knowing that R means it's a strong correlation doesn't tell me that you understand what that means. So that's why the second part of the question is, what, is, what does that mean? Okay, they're going to be really close to the line. I'm going to trust the line to make predictions. Are you with me? I agree with you. Once you know all the statistics, there's a lot of shit I don't need you to tell me because I know you know statistics. But I need to make sure you know statistics. So I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let me turn it off. Thank you. That's all. It was like blaring. Yeah. Okay. So here, I really just ask you, on a test, I'm going to ask you in turn, interpret R. So that would be strong negative correlation, right? So what does that mean? What's another way to say that? When I see uh, some uh, somebody's further away from Bronx Pizza, I would expect that their weight would be... If X increases, I would expect Y to... Or no, sorry, decrease. Yeah, so it's got a negative correlation, meaning they do the opposite. As one increases, the other one decreases. That's why the slope would be negative. So on, that, on C, you put, you put stronger here, correlation. Yeah, I would ask you, interpret R, so strong negative yeah. correlation. What does this R tell us about the line of best fit? The data points are close to the line. I would trust the line to make predictions, and then I ask you to predict, right? So real quick, how would I make this scatter plot and the line of best fit show up? What would I do? Okay, good. Y equals. Oh, I'm in a weird mode. Hold on. So I was in negative 2.87 roughly, plus 218.6 I think roughly. Right, so I can go to y equals, put my line of best fit in. If I hit graph right now, I get that. What what step did I miss? Zoom what? Yeah, still, because mine of course is not set up right. Damn it. So if I had zoom, Stat, bam. Now, real quick, just to redo that, just to show you. So if, oh shit and a half, I didn't want to do that. 
<laughs> okay. So if you go to do zoom stat and you get something like this, just come up and tell me, right? That means you're borrowing your calculator from somebody where the stat plot wasn't turned on. That's all. If you remember how to turn it on, then turn it on. Woohoo! Right, make sure it's L1, L2, make sure all come. Now when you do zoom stat, you should find this. You guys with me? This is what, again, so you already did the quiz. You know how this works. So you know there's gonna be a problem with the final exam. We have to do it and they have to come up and show me. Uh, same way as the quiz. <laughs> How can I use the calculator to do part D? How can I use the graph to do part D? Yes, yeah, second trace to get a calc. Value, and I want half a mile, right? So there we go, there would be my prediction for somebody who lives half a mile from Bronx Pizza. Now, of course, this is silly. This, this is really just silly. This is me just making shit up, right? On the final, I'm going to give you actual real-life data. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yes? On the final, are you allowed, like, since all of the work is in the calculator? You... For this kind of problem, yes. Yes, for that problem, you just put the answer. Yeah, so the important parts of this problem are interpreting what you see. And, and yeah. then knowing how to get there. I was right? just saying for just the, like if you just per, per Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like on the quiz, equals... on the quiz people would write, I used um, a calc value, and I'm like, beautiful. Cool. A little tear comes out. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Anything else you want to focus on, or was anything in there vague? I think most everybody did pretty well on the quiz, so I think this problem, if I were you, I might just find this problem, knock it out, right? Especially because it's relatively recent, and then I might find this dude, depends on how you feel about this dude, I don't know. Yes? Oh yeah, sure. So once you have this on your screen, if I then ask you to predict something, go to second trace to go to calc. So the beautiful thing about this top row on your graphing calculator is that is all graph. This is all graphical. So when you see it saying calc, that actually means graphically calculate something. Cool. Well, a graphing calculator should probably be good at. Um, so if I hit Second trace, I get to this, and I want to do the value of something. I want to know the value of the function when x is half a mile. And then I get my predicted weight. If somebody lived half a mile from Brunk's Pizza, and this correlation did exist the way we say it does, would they have to be exactly this weight? Especially because why? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. You were saying something. I was just trying to hear you. What's, what was R? Was R perfect? No. So I would, I would expect my predictions to not be perfect, but they should be relatively close. Right? The closer R is to 1 or negative 1, the closer our prediction should be to reality. Um, could we go over the number 1? And on the, on the yeah, sure. Of course. I just haven't done it in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk about blast from the past. Read through number one. <laughs> Sorry. Just remember trying to blind my students. <laughs> Try to do stats now. This kind of problem, I always get people, you guys get so wrapped up in some of the more recent stuff we've done that you try to make this, you try to use all these different formulas. This is a standard z-score problem. This is a chapter six, at least this part is chapter six, right? 
So what's the first thing I should do on this problem here? What kind of distribution am I working with? Normal, yeah. It says right here. Assume it's normal. Cool. So I got a normal distribution. I can draw that. Yeehaw. Yes? What goes in the middle? Yeah, the mean. 164.71. And what data point am I interested in? Data point? Sure, Jeff. What data point am I interested in? Anybody interested in something? 200. Yeah, the question's asked about 200, so let me put 200 where it goes. And I want to know greater than, so it's going to be that area. So I know it's going to be less than half for sure. Let me stop for a minute. Here, let me do this. It's not enough room on there. There we go. All right. Are we allowed to use scratch paper? Shit, yeah. Okay. All right, so in the middle goes the mean. And then I'm curious about 200, and I want to know the area the probability above 200. So there, that's the very first step. Draw your picture. Your picture is supposed to help you. Thankfully, I don't think I've had anybody. Sometimes I'll have somebody put 200 over here for some reason, and I'm like, okay. okay. And again, it's just because, you know, they think everything's different in statistics. No, we're just borrowing a freaking number line from mathematics. That's all this is. Um, what's the next step? How do we get the probability? What's the next step? Good, yeah, get the Z-score. And then, of course, we got the chart of all answers. All right, sounds like a TND thing. We must find the chart of all answers. So what's the Z-score formula do for this one? What do I put in there? Sorry, do it again. What's our data point? It's always our data minus the mean, right? So our data is 200. The mean is 164.71. Standard deviation is 3850. Does anybody here drink coffee? Anybody here get coffee, yeah? Where do you get coffee from, if you want to tell me? Uh, oh, beautiful. I love it. Me too. Uh, so that's a lot less expensive than, I don't know. Was the Starbucks? Okay. But you know, if you get coffee from Starbucks, you could do that. Just don't calculate your average annual spending on coffee. That'll make you sad. Okay. So what do you guys get for the Z score here? By the way, here's here's a very common mistake I still see some people doing. I'm gonna make a mistake. I am making a mistake right now. Did I make more than one mistake? No, I only made one mistake. I mean one mistake. Look at that Z score. If you got a Z score like that. What would, what's your reaction? If that was the z-score, what's your reaction? Uh, it's wrong. Yeah, it's almost definitely wrong. Yeah. What does that mean? Funny enough, because I literally just did that. <laughs> I had a feeling. That's why I wanted to do it. I appreciate you speaking up and, and confessing. Yeah, no, that would I mean know. that this amount of money is 195.7 standard deviations. Holy shit. Right? So I'm not saying that's impossible. I'm saying that is really unlikely. So what mistake did I make, of course, when I put this in? I got to tell the calculator what the top is. Order operations. It follows, please excuse my dumbass son. So it's going to do division. <laughs> did I tell you this? My algebra class one time, came, they come up with this. Please excuse my <coughs> def deficient algebra skills. That was their saying. So... Or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally Bellman. So I got to tell it, oh yeah, calculator, you ain't got eyeballs, thankfully. Um, that's the top. And I want all of that divided by 38.5. So that looks a lot better. Is that what you guys got? That's better. Okay. So it's the most common mistake I see is just garbage in, garbage out. The calculator is going to calculate what you put in there. And you put in there, divide this first, and then subtract. That's not what you want. And real quick, just to harp on this a little bit, this is really evil, this notation we use, because there's hidden parentheses here. I don't need to draw that because the bar gets really long. When I put it in the calculator, did the bar get really long? No, so the calculator is at a disadvantage. 
doesn't have eyeballs. I don't want this to have eyeballs. That would freak me out. Okay. So I get 0.92. And why do I always round these scores to two places? Yeah, the chart only goes to two places. Can somebody look that up for me? What do you guys get when you look at 0.92? Point eight, point eight, two, yeah, 8212. Is that the answer? 8212, circle that. Yay! Sorry. <laughs> Man, by the way, I am really sorry. I got very little sleep last night, so I am extra loopy, and I apologize. Um, where is 8212 in the picture? Where is 8212? Whenever I look up a z-score, what do I get? The area that is yeah. below it. So put that on the picture and then step back and go, I didn't get the answer yet. How do I get the answer? One, one minus that. So point one, seven, eight, eight. Shua. So what does that mean physically? What, what's the interpretation of that number in the real world? What does that mean? There's two ways you can answer that question. Actually, there's more than two, but there's two right ways. Anybody? Can anybody tell me what that number means? All right, I'll give you the better interpretation. No, no, no. I want a real world physical interpretation of that number because that statistics is all about the frickin' real world. 17.88% of U.S. adults spend more than $200 a year on coffee. Yeah. And that's easily done. <laughs> it's easily done. You guys with me? Or you can say the probability that a person spends more than $200 a year is 17.88%, but this first way I said it is even a little step closer to just really real world. You want us writing I could ask that question. I've asked that question in the past. So I, I could ask that question somewhere on the final. Right? Because again, the, one of the most important things in statistics is interpreting the numbers we get. They're supposed to mean something real life. When you get x equals 7 in algebra, did it always mean something? No. It could mean 7 apples. But very often it's just seven, because that's the answer to everything. Statistics, real life shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm really sorry, guys. You you look so dejected. We're almost there. Next week is the final. Everybody understand that next Monday is the last day of our class, right? Don't come next Wednesday. If you do, that's great. Just hang out. I won't be here. I'll be grading stuff. You guys with me? Okay. My office hours are going to basically remain the same, and it almost doesn't matter for you guys because Monday and we're done. Um, I'll say this in case I forget Monday, but after you're done with the final, if you want to, you can email me anytime after that and, and say, how did I do, and I'll let you know. Because as soon as I get it done grading, I'll probably be done grading your final uh, that evening. I like to get it done fast. I'll put it in the system, but again, I don't think the system necessarily updates every night. So if you're waiting for your grade to show up, where do you find them? Still, you find them in self-service now? Do you find your grades there somewhere? Well, you, you got a teacher that doesn't do that. Too bad. Uh -huh. But I think you should be able to find your grades in self-service, right? The way we used to with WebAdvisor? Okay. Anyway, sorry, sorry. What else we got? What else you see? Huh? This one? Okay, so what's the only difference between A and B? I just have to make two z-scores. Oh. Look up both areas and then subtract them, right? Because that'll leave the area that's between the two, right? What about C? C is different beast. Can you draw C for me? You're like, yes, Jeff. No, stop. Can you draw what that? God, I'm, loop. I'm really sorry. No. Careful. P95 is not a confidence interval. What's P95? Percentile. It is the 
amount of money spent on coffee that has what percentage where? Yeah, has some what percentage below it? 95% below it. That is the picture I can immediately draw from that question. So what kind of problem is this? Do I do this? Probably the way I said that, the answer is no, but watch, I'm gonna do this. Oh, there's 0.9, there's 0.95. Is that what this problem wants me to do? No. There's no z-score that's 0.95. That's an area, correct? So where do I look up 0.95? On the bottom right hand corner. Definitely not. It's not a confidence interval. Where do I look up 0.95? It's an area, correct? So I'm going to look it up in the body. You with me? And it's going to be this little weird dude, right? Very familiar one. 1.645. Let me let me see. So that is 1.645. Anybody in here freaked out that you remember like if I want to make a 90% confidence interval, does anybody just remember the z-score? <laughs> you don't have to because you got a chart. Uh, it's 1.645. So why is this 1.645? Help me out. What percentage is here? 5%. If I did chop a symmetric line here, wouldn't there be 5% there also? Wouldn't that leave 90% in the body? That's why that number is for a 90% confidence interval, but this is not a confidence interval. I just want the z-score that has 95% below it. Now, is this the answer to this question? No. If that was the amount of money somebody spent, 90, 95th percentile amount of money spent on coffee is $1.65. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> or do you get this much coffee in a year? There's my coffee for the year. All right. I'm um, so what do I have to do with this? That, of course, is a Z-score. How do I change it into an amount of, of money spent on coffee? What's that backwards formula? I'll get it started. No? By the way, what does 1.645 mean? What's that z-score tell you? What's it mean? What's the z-score mean? It's the distance that we're taking. Be more specific. Not, I would, as you say that, I'll say miles, right? Number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point, right? So if I start at the mean and I go, don't want to put a negative there, I go this many steps, I'll get to the data point. That's all that damn formula is saying. It is a direct application of the definition of z-score. If I start at the mean, 164%, and I go 1.645 steps up, I will end up at the data point that is there. And whatever the hell that is. I don't know. By the way, you guys, uh, I do have the answer key for this, right? So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be trying to feverishly copy all this. It's all on the key. No, I've got it here with me. I'm just not going to give it to you yet. All right. So just remind you how these days work. If nobody's asking questions, the floor is completely yours. Let me ask you a question. What would you do differently in part two? It looks like almost the same question. So what's the very first thing I have to do before I start to do part A? Change the standard deviation. Right? Did I take a sample? Check. Am I asking about the sample mean? Check. So I got to change. So the work will be exactly the same. I'll just be using a different standard deviation. This is the one for individuals. I need the one for groups of 32. Right? Okay. So then we got our requisite probability question section. I could give you questions like this, or I could give you like a contingency table. 
Remember, like, the yes, no, and the blah, blah, you know, what's probably your yes, given that you're this one. Yeah. <laughs> right, that kind of problem. Or I could give you this. This is sort of like the, we put Democrats, Republicans, and Independents in a haunted house. You remember that one? So this one's less interesting. It's just pieces of paper. Okay. Anything look weird or something? And it looks like you don't remember how to do it. What about number four? What kind of problem is number four? Besides the fact that who the shit are these people? But oh well, they exist. This is from a, a, a little while back, so hopefully things have changed a bit. Anyone know what kind of problem this is? What you got? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. yeah. Can, can we just do that? And also yeah. explain number four, too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure why you're asking it quite like that, but it, it, that's a valid question you can ask. So today it's all about asking questions. Um, and again, I, I've got the entire answer key, but uh, what do you, so for number two, for so for part two of number one, does everybody agree that this meets the requirements for when I change the standard deviation, right? Okay. So what is the formula for changing the standard deviation? Yeah, take the old standard deviation divided by the square root of n, right? Okay. Hmm. I have a square root of, what's the sample size? 32. 32. So the purpose of the practice final exam is for you to try the problems out and come with like specific questions that highlight the areas that you feel weak, right? I've created the practice final answer key already. So that's what you can compare your work to. You don't need to do this, right? You never have to do any of my practice tests. This is just another study guide. What do you have instead of this? So you have the homework, you have the old tests, you have all, this, all the old quizzes, right? I kind of like to ask the same type of questions, so that's not a bad place to go study. Um, I have no problem if that's what everybody wants to do, is to do these problems and then I give you the key. That's fine, if that's what we want to do. Um, so once I get this, I'm going to do the exact same work that we did up here for part A. I'm just not going to use the standard deviation they gave me. I'm going to use the one that we had to create, right? I don't know what I did with that paper. Oh, here it is. So this is the work we did for 1A. The only difference for this part is I'm not gonna have 38.5 there, right? That was the old standard deviation. I need to use whatever the hell this is. And what'd you guys get for this? 6.8. Yeah, 6.806. So, do you see how this is the same also? So again, the work you do here will be exactly the same as the work you do here. You're just going to use a different standard deviation. Everything else about the problem is going to be exactly the same. That's how these problems are, period. So yeah, that is how it's going to be on the final. So if you look back in time, do you remember the problem? Uh, I gave you the problem about the uh, climate change, the temperature of the earth over time and so forth, right? So there's a series of questions uh, picking one year, and then there's a series of questions picking a group of six years or seven years or whatever it was, right? So that was this kind of problem. That was a central limit theorem problem. Um, okay, so I'll do all the same work. 
because the question is exactly the same, except now I'm talking about a sample mean instead of a single set of data. So the formula is going to look exactly the same except the course. I'm going to divide by 6.806, the new standard deviation. So what do you guys get for that? Just looking at this, how do you feel about that answer? What does that indicate to you? This is normally distributed, correct? For two reasons. One, I told you, and two, it's over 30. So it's like really normal. Unusual starts at how many standard deviations away? Two. Two. This z-score is 5.19. And the question is, what's the probability something is further up than this? I almost don't have to look at the freaking chart. I should know the answer is going to be basically nothing. It's basically zero. It's like 0.0002 or something, which for most humans is Zero. If I look at the chart, I'm not going to get that answer, though. And we talked about why the chart's wrong. Uh, if I look up 5.19, I get to this. So that's below it, so then I would say 0. 0.0001 above. But I don't know if you guys remember how we talked about this. That's true for 3.5, but as I move further and further up, because it's going to be even less and less and less stuff out there. So I would say approximately zero, but if you say 0 0.0001, I'll be fine with that because I'll know you got it from the chart. Sorry. So I, I, I'm going to say this. The, if I stand up here and just do each of these problems, you're not going to get from this what you're supposed to get. You're supposed to try these out and come with questions. I've got the answer key. You can compare your answers to the answer key. If there are some questions here, you either aren't sure how to even start, or if you tried something and it didn't work out, or you're not sure what to do with it, let me know. So if there is a specific one, you're like, I really don't know even what to try, we can do that problem, right? So see, last time we did this one, but I do have that on the answer key, right? Yes, cool. These, by the way, on the actual final exam, I will give the five steps, but do you guys see number six is a hypothesis test, yes? So you do need to do the five steps. So on the actual fat final, I'm gonna have A, B, C, D, you know. But I already had, or did I? Or did I just do that for, yeah, I just did it for space, I guess. So you got to do the five steps, the hypotheses. Is it going to be Z or T set at the rejection region, all that kind of stuff, right? Okay. Um, so we could, if you wanted to, if you, if you try number six and weren't sure how to do it, or if you're not sure how they get set up, we could try out number six. Um, number seven always freaks people out. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, so number six would be a good problem for that. All right, so look at number six. Can somebody read through that and let me know what the claim is? So that's what it's been historically. Somebody's got a claim about that. Yeah, 
average has now changed. So as a group of staff students thinks the average has changed. So that's the claim being made, right? So how would I write that claim in mathish? Yeah, I don't know greater than. It doesn't say it has increased. It just says it's changed. So not equal to. They think it's not equal to what it used to be. So what's that going to be, the ho or the ha? So what's the ho going to be? Oh, Jeff, as I write it. <laughs> So it's got to be the opposite of what the ha is. Is this going to be a one-tail or a two-tail test? Two-tail. Not equal to could go up or down. Two-tail. So that's step one. Step two, Z or T? This one's interesting because the standard deviation they give me, did it come from a sample? The standard deviation that we're given, did it come from a sample? Nope. It's presented as being the standard deviation of all stat students. It's just talking about all stat students before now. So that's, that's sigma's known. Is that, all, is that all I need to say to say I can use a z-score? What else do I need to say? What else do I need to check? Yeah, sample size is 45, which is greater than 30, check. So then I can use z-scores, kick ass. Okay, I like it. What's the next step? Rejection region, where's evidence start, right? So this is a two-tail test. Alpha is 0.01, two-tail test, z-scores. Can you guys look up the z-score for that? So alpha is 0.01. So you should be looking at your T-score chart, to be honest. It's a two-tail test, right? Yeah, two-tail, alpha 0.01. What is it? Totally. Kick ass. Everybody, where's Z-scores on the T-score chart? Where are they? At the bottom. Why are they at the bottom? Because the only reason T-scores exist is to cover our ass from when we don't trust the S, when we think S is not a great approximation. When has S become a better approximation? When has everything we see in a sample become a better approximation? The sample size gets bigger. So when I have a sample size that is really large, I don't need T-scores anymore. I can just use Z-scores. That's why these are Z-scores, right? And this kicks so much ass because this is set up perfectly for hypothesis tests. There's a one-tail test, there's a two-tail test that kicks ass. So I have a two-tail, 0.01. If I stop, I get a T-score. If I go all the way to the bottom, I get a Z-score. So 2576, right? Can you put that in words? All right, so if I shade this in, there's my rejection region. So in words, if what happens? Greater than what? Or? What can we do? Okay, cool. All right, so now we've set up where evidence starts, what's far enough away from where the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis expects it to be here, right? 
So even if we get a sample mean that was different from 1.43, every sample mean I would expect to be different from 1.43 because of sample variance, right? So the, so the null is going to be happy with anything that shows up in here. We've got to get far enough away from that to say, no, it's more likely it's not really that. That's so far away, it can't be explained by just sample variability. So that's why we reject it if we get that far out. So step four now is, okay, we've established what far enough away is. How far away do we get? It's where we calculate our Z star, right? What's the formula for Z star in this case? What do I need to do first, actually? Get my new standard deviation, right? So what they tell us? Standard deviation was 0.25. Uh, where am I at? 45. Yeah, I think it's 0 0.037. And the formula for z-score never changes. It's always our data out, what's our sample mean? What's our sample mean? 1.51. Minus what we're assuming the mean to be. So what number always goes here in a hypothesis test is going to be the number from the claim. We assume that 1.43 is correct. divided by that new standard deviation. Should be two points something. Two point one six, okay. What is it? One four six. Ooh. Let's see. Oh. Wait. So see, it's point oh eight divided by point oh three seven. So I got two point one six. Did you take this further out? Which is good because I think I did the same thing in the key, but standard deviation at least three places, right? So this is close. To, this is good. How do I get the p value? for this. Alpha is the area in the tail of our rejection region. P value is the area in the tail of our Z star. So 2.16, it's over here, right? What's the area in that tail? So P value is always related to our Z score. We are going to have to do something because this is a two-tailed test, but let's just do this right now. What's the area in the tail that our z-score makes? How do I find that out? Two point one six. Is it that? Is it that? No, good. It's got to be 1 minus that, right? So 1 minus 0.9846. Yeah. That'd be 0 0.0154. That's the area in the tail that this z score makes. Does anyone remember since it's a two tail test, what do I have to do to get the p value? It's a two tail test. So I've got to double it. So the p-value would be 0 0.0308. How's that p-value relate to the alpha? Is it big or smaller? Bigger. Good. So that reinforces the result. Did we find enough evidence? 
Did we reject the null? Did we find enough evidence? Did we make it into the rejection region? No. So we, we didn't make it. So we fail. We fail to reject the null. We fail to support the alternate. Okay. So again, if you get into the appropriately named rejection region, you reject the null. Why does that make sense? The null thinks it should show up here. If I get out here, that's evidence he's wrong. If I don't get out there, that's not enough evidence he's wrong. Yes? Beautiful. If it was one tail, he wouldn't multiply. Exactly. So let me, let me ask you guys. Can somebody, anybody tell me exactly what area is right here that's shaded? What is that area right there? 0 0.005. So don't you have to double it to get what alpha is? So we do the same thing with the p value. Yeah, just to make it fair to compare. Okay. Personally, I, I just wish we would cut alpha in half and compare it, but we doubled this to call it the official p-value. Yeah. So the question was, can we do an example of finding the p-value? There we go. So we got a two for there. We got the hypothesis test, which you guys, uh, I don't know if you were like, well, thankfully that's in the past. Well, you know, final's coming, so it's going to still be there. Uh, and this is reminding how to find the p-value. So like you said, if this would have been a one-tail test, that would have been the p-value. We just double it if it's a two-tail test. Yeah, okay. I like it. Yes? Can you give me an example? Um, oh, before I do that, what's the conclusion for this? What was the claim? Which one? Which one was the claim? The ha. the ha. So therefore, I want to use this language, not that language, right? So we have not found sufficient evidence. To support the claim. That plagiarize. The average uh, amount of time to complete the stats test has changed. And again, don't write that down. It's on the key. So, did I write it on the key? That'd be good. Yes. So coming back to number 10. Oh, so number 10, what kind of problem is number 10? I kind of give it away there at the end, but you should also tell from just the way it's put together, what kind of problem it is. Mm -hmm. It's the hypothesis test. So yeah, so again, you're going to use all the same five steps. What's it a test for, though? This was a test for means, the one we just did. This one is a test about percentages. So a lot of you guys, for some reason, you'll have a problem all about percentages, and you still try to use the x bar minus mu. You, you're, so you got to be really careful. Just look for the key words, percentage, right? So then instead of doing n greater than 30, how am I going to show that it's normal? What am I going to check? N, P, and N, Q. I love it. Okay. So, do you guys want to do that problem or what? So, it's the same five steps. But now, I'm going to have a different thing to check to make sure it's normal. And I'm going to have a different z-score formula because now i got percentages. Right? So, let me do this. Let me do this. I'm going to give you guys the answer key. So if you did try some of these out, you can start to compare. It's a two-pager. Normally about 25 or
Okay. So here I kind of um, blew this up a bit for number six, for example. Uh, let's see. Nine and ten are there. Yeah, okay, good. We got everything on there. Yay. So I think. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. This class, I didn't do this one, but we did this one. Of course, this was that new stuff. If you weren't here last time, you might want to ask somebody near you if you can copy their formula sheet, right? Or, again, you can bring all your formula sheets with you from the whole semester. Just make sure you add in the newest stuff, like the chi-square. Yeah, go for it. So let me see. I can't remember now. Did we actually get an answer on this? Uh, what kind of problem is this? Does anyone know? I mean, so, okay. So I tell you a percentage who think this. I select a certain number, and then ask what's probably that four of them believe it's not a priority. Yeah, yeah. So I would call this like an NPQ problem. So I, I agree, it's an NCR problem, right? Not related to New Vegas, but. So here I can identify N. What's P? 9%, so what would I write down? I'm not going to write down 9%. Point of 9. So what's Q? 0 0.91. Kick ass. So now i got NPQ. So in order to do this problem, how do I, what's the formula for this? I want to know the probability that four of them, if I take 35, I want four of them. You basically said part of it just a second ago. And again, you don't have to remember. you got your formula sheets, right? So what's the formula for this probability? In fact, can, does anyone know the official name for this distribution? How many things are there that somebody could think? They could either think it's not a priority or they could think that it is. It's crazy. So how many possible options are there for what somebody could think? Two. Holy shit. So bicycle, two wheels, binomial, two options. Binomial probability. How important is it that you remember that word? Not. It isn't. 
I like to call this an NPQ problem because I'm going to identify N easy and I can identify P, which means I can calculate Q, right? So these kind of problems are going to have a very specific setup. They're going to give me a percentage that something happens, and they're going to say, what if we take this many people? What's well, probably this many of them? That will be an NPQ problem every time. So then if you look at your formula sheets, you'll see this little dude here. This is the part, remember, that's in the calculator, right? Totally. Let's set up the formula first. I don't even know what I'm shoving in there yet. So what goes where? What do I put here? 35. So I got 35 people. I want to choose how many? Four. Bless you. P was, so this is why this formula is really nice. I want four successes. So how many failures do I want? 31. All right. Now that we have a formula, we could put that in there. Thirty-five. Somebody help me out. Somebody remember where the C is. Math. Probability. That makes sense. Number three. 35, choose four. And again, if you have the newer calculator, it looks nice, but then you have to remember to hit the over arrow, right? To either come back up or come back down. If you have an older calculator, it's just going to say 35 NCR4, which is actually nice because you just keep going. Times 0.09 to the fourth. Oops, Jeff. Say again? Yeah, yeah. All right. So let me do this again. All right. Clear, 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 clear. First thing you plug in is 35. Then you go to math, probability, NCR. So if you don't plug a number in, it's going to assume you mean the last number that was on the screen. 35 choose 4. I have to hit the over arrow. You don't have to worry about that. Times 0.09 to the fourth. Hit the over arrow to come back down. Times 0.91 to the 31st. Okay, so I expect about 18, almost 18 and a half percent uh, of the time, I'm going to get four out of a group of 35. What's the matter? What happened? It's not. It's not. It's still doing the 35 NCR. You say yeah, totally. That's what it's supposed to do? Yeah. So again, you either have the, the newer RAM that makes the problem look the way that we would write it, or let me see if I, I don't think this does. Let me see. Hold on. I think this might. Let me see if this did it. 35 math probability yeah see so these are the older calculators nothing wrong with them old doesn't mean bad 35 choose 4 times 0.09 to the fourth Jeff why do I keep doing that to the fourth times 0.91 to the 31st bam so that's the way it looks if you have an older RAM calculator older operating system Oh, okay, so let me do this again. Um, let me turn it back to this, okay. All right, so for those of you the new calculator, here's what you gotta be worried about. 35, probability, choose four. Do you see how I'm down? I'm down in the subscript, correct? Do you see how the poor little calculator is doing everything it can to help me? It's got a little arrow key, little little arrow. I hit the over arrow to come back up. Right? Do you guys remember like Y2 minus Y1? The little two is the subscript. I can't stay down there for the rest of the problem because it wouldn't make any sense. So I have to come back up. So 35, choose four. Hit the over arrow to come back up. Times 0.09 to the fourth. Now do you notice how I'm up now? I have to hit the over arrow to come back down. 
0.91 to the 31st. Because all the writing is going to be really tiny. Okay. Lock it. All right. And again, that means about roughly about 18.5% of the time we would get 4 out of 35. So this is how, you know, this is exactly, they pretty much just guess. But if you're in a room, a classroom, with mostly right dominant chairs. Are there any left-handed chairs in this room by chance? Anybody who's left-handed? Nobody's left-handed in here? No? You're left-handed, but you, they didn't, we don't have any left-handed? Oh, yeah, we're evil. So uh, either they will just forget about you, and I'm sorry, or you'll have like two or three chairs. So how do they calculate that? They, they can calculate it using this. If I'm expecting a group of 45, what's the probability that more than two left-handers will show up and then they can calculate whether it's worth their time to get a left-handed chair. Does that make any sense? So here apparently, I don't know what happened, right? Somebody could have stole them. I don't know. So I'm sorry. Um, okay. How do I do part B? What's changed for part B? What's changed in part B? Now I got a lot more than 35. Now I got it 512. How do I get the mean? The expected number of people that don't care about kids. What's the formula for the mean in this case? It's the best mean formula we have. NP, 11. Five twelve times point oh nine. Okay. It's like four sixty point eight. Yeah. Forty six. Oh, I forgot to make up there. Forty six point something or other. So it's greater than five. Greater than or equal to. And then, of course, uh, oh, that's, don't worry about it. I'm thinking about something else. NP is the same part of the check we make to see if something's normal. That's not what I care about right now. So the mean is about 46.08. And the standard deviation, that formula is also really nice. But again, that's all on the, on the sheet. Yeah. Min and max expected values. I probably will say min and max usual values, just to make sure you really know what I mean. Of course, back in the day, this back when we actually learned this stuff, unusual started exactly two steps away. So you just take the mean plus two standard deviations, the mean minus two standard deviations. You got your min and max. I like it. And this is where I, would, I might follow that question up with, well, is three unusual or is 27 unusual or whatever, right? And you just see, does it fall in there or not? Cool. Did we look at, well, two and three. Three is the one that gets me confused. Um, I'm going to give you a problem like this. And this is a general probability distribution. It's got x and it's got p of x. So what formulas do I probably want to use to do stuff with this? If you look at your formula sheet, I mean, in order for me to figure out the mean, what formula am I going to use? So again, I would never start teaching a class this way, but you've already suffered through all my derivations. I obviously want a formula that's got x and p of x in it, right? So the little section on my formula sheet that's got x's and p of x's, 
That's got to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the mean is going to be the sum of xp of x, which reminds me what to do with this column, right? What do I want this column to be? Because I need, in order to get the mean, I have to add up a bunch of xp of x's. Do I have any xp of x's? No, so I've got to make them. So let me make x times p of x. And then I can add them up, right? So this is where we could do L1, L2. L3 would be L1 times L2. Do you guys remember this stuff? Okay, so another thing you could do, a really smart idea. You guys have the, uh, you got a few days in the weekend. You could get all your worksheets. And if you haven't tried the practice final exam out yet, you're gonna get all your worksheets and do the practice final. If you haven't, let me say this again, because I didn't say this this time. Everybody's got a key. If you haven't tried the practice final exam out yet, don't look at this thing. I'm sorry, yes? You don't have a key? How did that happen? Oh, I see. So I get people that kind of look at this and they'll say, oh yeah, yep, that's what I would have done. You know, and then you build up false confidence. So you don't want to look at this thing until you've actually tried the practice final exam out. Right? So you don't have to do the whole damn thing. Just focus on the ones that you feel the least, like you remember it the least or you feel the, the least comfortable with it. This kind of problem, I would hope that most of us would be pretty good with. We did a decent number of these. I don't know if you guys remember how this works. What's the shortcut to answer part B? I want the probability that x is greater than 3. Well, if that's 11%, what amount should be greater than it? Well, I can add those up, or I could just do 1 minus 11%, right? Because you would have checked. These do add it to be 1, so you would have checked that. Okay. Do you guys remember, by the way, where I made one that added it to 0.9999 or 1.0001? So you got to actually add them and say it's close enough to 1 yet. To get points on A for number three, you you just say two things. You say that um, all of the P of X's add up to one. So you can either write it that or you can write it in English. I love it. And then it's all between zero and one. Yeah. Only say this if it's true though. If I got one point oh and say the sum of P of X is one point oh oh one, which is close enough to one. It shows me you checked it and it shows me you know what it's supposed to be. Right? By the way, if you're ready for the final, you don't have to stay. You can go if you're ready. If you still have questions, let me know. And just so everybody understands, this is the first semester we've had where the finals aren't going to be at a different time. They're at the exact same time. So Monday is going to be same exact time we normally meet. You'll have the entire class time for the final. something set up for them? Oh, yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah totally. So Get like something set up, set up now, because okay. they, they normally want like a week in advance to know. Okay. So go, they should be able to make an appointment for you one day. Yeah. You could actually do it whenever it works on the Monday, to be honest. Oh, okay. As long, because yeah. they'll send it to me, and I'll send the thing, and they'll be there for you. But I, I just, all I need is the same day. And normally, day. I just want to, okay. to, to be there on the same like, day. Whatever works for you on Monday, okay. yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so like, I don't like, there's like nothing to mark on it. Thank like, you. Um, is it? Oh yeah, so you, that's right. So you missed my little thing. Yeah. If it says nothing, it's assumed okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Can I get another copy for the final exam practice thing? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Because I already wrote on the only one, and oh. I don't want to do that. I'll give you one that's not written on. Yes. I need to look at the practice thing. 
All right, let me find them. Because I'm not able to come because I'm getting my surgery yet. Oh, wait a minute. So wait a minute. Okay. Um, come at me again. So we talked about this. When? So last 